Now I want to actually talk about one specific form of an edge detector, perhaps the most widely used edge detector out there, referred to as the canny edge detector. You start off by filtering the image with a derivative of a Gaussian. Remember the whole concept of actually you can actually just apply the Gaussian to the derivative operator and generate a new kernel. And that's what this process is about. Basically, we would actually filter the image with a derivative of a Gaussian. And that will give us a magnitude and orientation of the gradient. So this is my original image. These are the two uh, derivatives in x and y. Again, just for uh, showcasing purposes, I'm showing you some results. They are not the actual outputs, all of this using this process, but I want to make sure that you guys understand what's going on here more uh, rather than actually give you the actual outputs. Uh, this is, of course, the magnitude of the gradient and, of course, the, the angle, the orientation of the gradient everywhere. We've looked at how to compute all of this so far. So these are the first two steps. The third step of computing edges is again taking this magnitude and doing some local processing to enhance the edges. So in canny edge detector, what basically is done is non-maximum suppression, which basically is uh, all about thinning the multiple pixels. So there are lots of pixels, for example, here you see right next to each other, and taking these into a single pixel width length. So anywhere where I see a lot of these types of regions that seem to have more than one pixel, we want to kind of start combining them into single pixels uh, and lines of single pixels. Uh, these are again approximations to kind of look at what's going on. But basically in essence comes down to take the wide ridges, remember those ridges from the way we've looked at a height map of these types of things, and reduce them down to something that's one pixel width. The fourth step in Kanye's detector is taking the gradient image again and coming with a, a method of both linking and thresholding uh, pixel groupings from one level to the other. So in essence, what we do is anywhere out there, we would define through thresholds. These two thresholds would be the low value and the high value, and then use the high threshold to start an edge. So wherever there's a high value information, uh, again, this is just for demonstration purposes. I would, let's say, find a high value here. Uh, I would start the curve at this thing, and basically anywhere in the thing, wherever I find low values, I'll continue finding the curve. So using this kind of a technique, we can actually start kind of building more local edges out of it. Doing this process and kind of doing various types of filtering mechanisms to keep on enhancing them within a thresholding that's going on, we should be able to generate a edge map. So here you see now a complete edge map. All of the edges are one pixel. Uh, sometimes they form complete lines out of it. Of course, this is still an image, and these are not line segments per se, but then there are other methods could be used to actually combine these into line segments, you know, half transform methods and stuff that you can read about on your own. Uh, we will not cover them. We will actually come back at looking at these types, in, uh, these types of edges for some other work in a later lecture. This, of course, is the actual output of edges of the original Tiger image that we were looking at. Just to reiterate, these were the steps we went through. We filtered the image using a derivative for Gaussian, found the uh, gradient information, did non maximum suppression to find the ridges down to single pixels. Then once we took these single pixels, we started linking and thresholding the images or the, uh, the edges. We're basically looking at the low and high and used the high threshold to start edge curves and the low ones to continue it to get an output like this.